Enjoying secrets of a sugar daddy? How about a little something extra? Here's today's dose of extra sugar with Marcus. Hey, this is Marcus, and welcome to this segment of Extra Sugar. Today, we are going to get caught up on some listener letters. I've got tons and tons of listener letters. We love you guys. Thanks for writing in. We do read them, and it's time to kind of get caught up on them. Now, a couple of them talk about the Patreon account, and let me just tell you, we're really populating the our Patreon account with lots of good photos, episodes before anybody else hears them. It's only $10 a month. And where does that money go? Well, it's very expensive to rent out the studio, and then I also pay Lily to help edit the episodes. And so it just kind of offsets those costs. And we have lots of great benefits, like our next party, all the VIP members of our Patreon will get the first invitations. Also, we are adding coaching and profile reviews to our Patreon members. So if you are interested in getting a profile review from me or Lily and some coaching, just sign up. $10 a month is less than a meal at McDonald's. We really appreciate your support and uh, then you'll become our favorite supporter of the show. Also, too, on Tuesday... We have a great episode coming out. This one's a little bit different. She has her own podcast called the Dichotomy Diaries podcast. And it's a personal journey that she has made when she met a gentleman. And uh, they got married. And it was quite a rocky marriage. And she goes into a lot of things uh, of what made this very toxic and fiery. It's pretty interesting. Where it ties into sugar dating is that she did sugar date before her marriage, and then her husband was actually a sugar baby for other men before and during the marriage. So you'll definitely want to hear that interview on Tuesday. All right, let's get into a listener letters. Man, I have a bunch, and I'm going to try to go through as many of these as I can. Now, I'm taking it back a few months, but... This one is from Victoria, and she says, Hi there. I love the podcast and so glad I discovered it. I am an unassuming baby in and out of sugar land since I was 21. I am 34 now. I am an equal opportunity baby. Lots of fun experiences and tips to be sustainable in this crazy life we choose to live. Hope you will consider me to come on the show in 2024. Cheers. So thank you, Victoria. I think we're going to try to reach out. And then I've got one from John. And he wrote in about two months ago and says, In 2006, I met a sugar baby on an adult website. She was bisexual, a massage therapist, and a bondage model. We got engaged in 2007 at a Wingers take over in Vegas in 2007. Happily married from 2007 to 2012 in a 24-7 DS relationship. Since our divorce in 2012, I have happily dated a variety of sugar babies, one of which lasted more than a year when I lived in Manhattan. Alternative relationships can take on many forms. If you need a guest, let me know. All right, thank you, John, for writing that in. I'll have Lily reach out. Uh, Here's one from Steph. She says, hey, I'm one of your biggest fans, an older sugar baby, 41. One year in the sugar bowl and never happier. Thank you for all you do. Hope to be at the next big party. Well, we hope you're there too. And if you're a member of the Patreon, you will definitely get the invite before anybody else. Here's the... Contact from Bobby. Says, hi, I love your show. It's really informative. I just had a question. In the Extra Sugar, Sugar Baby Allowance Guy, you say that Sugar Baby doesn't need to pay taxes if she stays under the IRS definition of gifts. Then in Extra Sugar, How to Become a Wealthy Sugar Baby, you discuss paying through an LLC. Wouldn't the IRS automatically make the Sugar Baby pay taxes if they have an LLC? I'm really confused on the tax topic. There seems to be a lot of contradictory advice, and I don't want to get myself or someone in trouble down the road. Also, if the sugar baby is an all pair from another country, 
How Might Taxes Work? Thank for your thank you for your podcast. It's helping a lot of people who are really shy or weren't good at the dating scene. Well, all tech situations are different. I know that when we had Short King and Molly on a an episode, they were talking about how to make that income uh, where you could actually use it to get credit, to buy things, and, and how to actually claim the income. And so the best way to do that was through an LLC or your own business, and then that way you can write off things to offset that income. And then, of course, a lot of sugar babies get cash under the table and they don't claim it. So they may be trying to finance something, but they don't show any income, although they might be bringing in six figures a year. So it's all kind of on what your goals are and what you want to do. And um, yeah, uh, I'm no tax accountant or tax advisor or lawyer, but there are many resources on the internet. Or if you want to talk to an accountant, they'll give you some great tips and tricks on how to basically make that income taxable and then how to offset that income. All right. But thanks, Bobby, for writing in on that. Okay. Here's one from Daphne. She says, first episode of the year and oh my God, my heart goes out to Alejandra. I am so angry. It was awfully painful to listen to. Now, uh, she's talking about the episode where my sugar baby, Alejandra, talked about a BDSM date that went terribly wrong. People are so disgusting and he should be outed. It's stereotypical that it is a guy that's doing this to a woman. Unfortunately, even in my prime time now, I'm 21, 5 foot 3, and I don't go to the gym enough, but my ex sugar daddy was 57, 6 foot, but skinny man, and even though I could not push him off. When sugar babies meet and have intimacy with the sugar daddies, we know there is an exchange. Sugaring is literally blood, sweat, and tears. We don't know if we are going to die, get kidnapped, get raped, or abused. We just trust that God sends an angel to protect us. This is way worse than having your career ruined because you have sex with younger women. I don't like it when men ask what we bring to the table. They don't realize how much we risk and how they are a part of the problem. I'm sure you have seen the spike in sexual assaults on Sugar Lifestyle Forum on Reddit. And if anything happens to us, we would be saying, well, I did this to myself because how much did we really need the money? It's not worth the risk to elevate our lifestyle. As Alejandra said about the victim mode and having to move on to not let it affect you, to walk away and just be smarter next time, sugar babies let so much slide with these sugar daddies men. We hurt ourselves to not hurt our little boy's ego. Sugar babies have to compartmentalize the, this whole other side of our life, our feelings, rejections, the trauma. That's why I never recommend sugaring to my friends, even if they are desperate. Yeah, I think I've actually read that one before, but uh, it, it was good to, to revisit that one. And she just wrote that in like a month ago. So thank you, Daphne, for that. Uh, here's one from Jackson says, Hey, loving the short King episode. I am five foot two and 56. I usually see shorter women, but have had very good relationships with women of all heights, even six foot. It's so much more about the mutual connection. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately height is a factor when women are looking for a mate, but it's just one factor. Um, you know, and you can certainly get past it. We have seen it. I've seen many guys that were, let's say, under average, and I believe like five foot nine is the average American male, somewhere around there. But you know what? There's so much more to than just physical height. And uh, you know what? Actually, for some people, it's a blessing because it forces them or causes them to bring out other personality traits that. You know, maybe a, a tall, good-looking man who's six foot two, and women just come to him easily. But he can be an absolute dickhead because he hasn't learned to develop his other personality skills because it came too easy. So anyway, I, I look at it as it, it can be a blessing. So thanks for the letter. All right, here's one from it says Sugar Baby Boy. Hello. Firstly, I'd like to say I'm a huge fan of your show, even though I did only start listening about a week ago. 
Secondly, down to business, I am a recently 25-year-old boy, and I am gay. Could be bisexual, nonetheless a sugar baby. I've been experiencing being sugared for years now, properly since I was 22. By properly, I mean being taken on trips and expensive dinners, hotels, the whole nine yards. My current problem is I've never tried to get that, and it just happened to be to me naturally. It still does, and I never see it coming. The daddies that have made it happen before are infrequent, and we've developed a true friendship, and I value it too much. It was also never pre-established what the relationship would be like. So back to the problem. I never tried before, but now that I am, it's hard for me to entice the daddies. There are some that favorite me, and I favorite them back, and sometimes they message first, and other times I message first. There are a couple where we have moved to other platforms to talk, but the conversation is getting dry. These are American daddies, and at the time the conversation started, I was living in Europe, and they said that they'd like to meet when I moved back. Surprise, I moved back yesterday. Problem is, I strongly believe they expect me to come on my own terms and see this through, but I'm lacking the funds. Also, FYI, I am Canadian. I know my personality slays, and I never had a problem hitting it off in person. Online is really a test for me, as I think I'm just a real life type of person. I also am listening to your podcast and would like to know if there is room for anyone in my position that could benefit from checking it out. You guys sound like so much fun and would love to party with y'all regardless. But I also want to know if I get the opportunity, could I have realistic hopes? I know there are daddies that looked at me on the low and I get approached. This boy just needs assurances and advice. Please gang, help this boy out. I bet I'm not the only sugar baby boy who listens and then he gives us instagram all the love sugar baby boy well i'll tell you what i really appreciate the letter and again if you want to come to our party and you want a guaranteed invite go to our patreon sign up and um, you're, you're going to get an invite to a party and you will have a lot of fun whether you're gay whether you're straight uh, we are a lot of fun very accepting and even though I personally don't swing that way, and most of the sugar daddies I don't, there are plenty of men here locally that would love to pamper you and treat you like a king or a prince. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not used to that dynamic, but there is plenty of it going on here. So uh, I think you can find what you're looking for. Okay, here's one from Ellie. Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. It says, we are intrigued by your content. Okay, and your smile. Would you please consider checking out our new podcast at TalkingKinkPodcast.com and joining our conversation? We'd love to chat. Well, that sounds like an invitation to be on their podcast, which I'm going to reach out and gladly accept. So I look forward to Talking Kink with Alex and Ellie soon. I'll let you guys know when that episode hits. All right, and finally, here's one from Esther. It's a couple. This I have a two-part letter. It says I just discovered your podcast last week, and I am loving it. Now this was um, a few months ago. She says I started from the beginning and have already binged the first 75 episodes. Back in 2015, I was a sugar baby on SA with no expectations of anything serious with anybody. Lo and behold, I fell in love with one of my sugar daddies, and in 2018 we got married, and I am now living the Cinderella life with a man I love and adore. He treats me like a queen, and, a, and life is a dream. So I wanted to contact you since, as far as I can tell from the episodes I've listened to and previewing the titles of the episodes, I haven't. You haven't had a guest on who ended up married to their sugar daddy. If you're interested in having me as a guest, I'd be happy to talk about my experiences as a sugar baby as well as what it's been like for me to settle down and live a much more traditional life with my sugar daddy spouse. If you're not interested, well, sad for everyone since I consider myself to be a very entertaining and well-spoken, but nevertheless, I will continue to binge the series since I love all the stories and have enjoyed reminiscing about my days as an S.A. sugar baby. And then she writes back again. Yeah, we're definitely going to contact you. We're going to hopefully we'll get you on the show soon. But it says, this one was just uh, about a week ago. 
Hi, Marcus and lovely ladies. I love the show. Only discovered the podcast a few months ago. Started at the beginning, and I am currently listening to episode 71. The last few episodes I've listened to keep making references to your wanting to interview sugar babies who married their sugar daddy. Well, that would be me. I was a sugar baby on Seeking many years ago in 2015. I met the most perfect sugar daddy who, in 2018, became my husband. I've heard Marcus say that when people ask him where he meets these beautiful women, he will joke and say that he met them on Farmers Only. This is hysterical because that's exactly what my husband and I tell people as well when they want to know what app or website we met on. Great minds and senses of humor think alike, I suppose. Yeah, I do that, and it's kind of funny because people ask, oh, where'd you meet her? And if you say online, then they, immediately they ask, oh, which, which app or which site? And I'll just jokingly say, oh, farmersonly.com. That's a great one, and I always get quite a reaction sometimes of shock of are you kidding me or is this for real <laughs> so anyway it's, it's pretty funny uh comeback yeah, well she goes on anyway i live on the east coast washington dc area which is where i did my sugar dating and i have a bunch of stories about my experience both civilian and sugar dating i'm happy to share but mostly i would love to come on the show and share what it's like to be married to a sugar daddy for context he and his ex-wife were swingers so I know a lot about that world, too, in case it interests you. So for him to join Seeking post-divorce was a natural place for him to gravitate to since he loved beautiful women who were open-minded, like many of the sugar babies you know in Arizona. I was raised LDS and actually lived in Arizona for a period of time in the late 1990s. And when I left the Mormon church and was sowing my wild oats, I got so sick of being treated like my only value was my sexuality and my vagina that I finally thought that if that was my only value, I might as well make some money with it. So that's why I joined Seeking. I'm now in my late 40s and my husband is in early 50s. We are in a monogamous marriage, but we still have had great times in the bedroom and I think he's the sexiest man alive. We travel the world in first class, live in a gorgeous home, own multiple investment properties, and are looking forward to growing old in a life of love and luxury. I have a podcast studio in my house. I was on a podcast last year, and my husband thought I was so incredible on it that he built me a podcast studio for Christmas in case podcasting was something I wanted to do more of so I could do something virtually. I'm also happy to come out to Arizona because who doesn't want to get away from the cold this time of year? As I'm only on episode 71, maybe you do find a married sugar baby to interview, but if you haven't yet or you just find my story intriguing, let me know. I'm happy to chat. Well, there you go. That is a fantastic letter. And yes, Esther, we will be reaching out soon. Definitely. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's Extra Sugar. It was a bunch of letters from listeners, and we absolutely love hearing from our listeners they seem to be liking the show, but if you have any tips or suggestions or topics that you want to hear, we are open. Man, I've got a lot of good guests coming up, but we always like to get a little variety in the show. So let us know what you like. And again, if you want to message us on a Patreon, and if you're a paid member, you will definitely get priority status to us. And then uh, also follow us on Instagram at Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. And you can message us direct there, too. We love that, and we get those right on our phone instantly. Okay, look for that new episode on Tuesday. I'm telling you, it's a good one. It's Amanda from the Dichotomy Diaries podcast, and you're not going to want to miss this one. All right, until next time, bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed your extra sugar with Marcus. As always, visit our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com, to comment or tell us your story. 